Hi, I am Jane Klein. I am a registered nurse and I work in the field of dialysis and home dialysis particularly. First started out doing in-center hemodialysis and did that for 15 years in-center and learned about another way to take care of kidney disease and take care of loss of kidney function through home therapies. And I have, for the past nine years, been teaching people to stay in their own homes and do their own hemo and their own peritoneal dialysis. And it's my assignment today and my joy to teach you and talk with you about peritoneal dialysis, which is another one of the modalities and choices of people with kidney failure. Peritoneal dialysis uses your own body's membrane. It's a filter that's usable. It runs from top to bottom, side to side, front to back of your own body. It isn't an organ in itself. It lines all the, the organs and the intestines. And it, it works somewhat like a colander, which lets some things flow in and some things flow out, but keeps other things. And PD can be done by patients at home by themselves. They're, they're a the surgeon instills a catheter into your body and drops it into the membrane and the catheter works with putting fluid in and out. This is an example of the catheter that's inside and it rests inside a, just about in the middle lower portion of the pelvis. There are two cuffs that heal. One heals into your muscle and the other heals into your skin and that takes a couple weeks to heal and, and then it's ready for use. Two to three weeks typically. And then there's only about four or six inches that come outside your body and your clothing hides it. It's very flexible and what does the transfer set looks like? I'm going to slip on a little apron that talks, can kind of help you visualize what the transfer set looks like. The, the surgeon typically places the catheter in your lower abdomen, or even some surgeons will plant it in your upper part of your chest, depending on your preference and the surgeon's recommendations, which is best for you. This, the catheter itself sticks out about four to six inches and then we add a transfer set. And there's a couple different types depending on what the unit is using, what product of a transfer set. So I'm gonna keep that on so I can let you keep seeing that. It's a myth that the, because you've had abdominal surgery that you can't have a peritoneal catheter placed. The surgeon will help determine whether you, the surgeries you had keep you from having a peritoneal catheter. You, it's a minor surgery. Sometimes it's done in local or light general anesthesia. And it's oftentimes near your belly button or mid chest. Before the surgery, you show your surgeon where you wear your belt so that the catheter exit site won't rub your or rub and get irritated. The end of the catheter is placed low in the pelvic area. How do I care for a PD access? You don't want to use sharp objects like scissors around like to cut your dressing off and you want to avoid constipation because the catheter your body needs to be flowing per well and clear because your body is doing the dialysis and you can't let this little catheter get caught up in intestines that are full of stool. You clean the exit site every day and keep it clean after it's healed in this place. Sometimes uh, you'll be directed to use some antibiotic cream on it also. And there's dressings that can be used over it, sometimes a piece of gauze, sometimes they're like a band-aid, depending on what your unit and doctor advise. And you use a sterile technique. Now, a lot of people are concerned about, well, well, what about all this catheter hanging out of my body? There are belts that have been de designed to help you manage that. And I brought one today to show you. This place, I always tell people, it's like a holster for your peritoneal catheter. It's got a little pocket and little Velcros that 
hold it in place and depending that you can have it flipped one way or the other and also you can wear it above or below your catheter exit site. So these are well managed. And every day you need to check that your, your exit site is clean and not having redness, drainage, or tenderness, just as you would for any opening in your body that might be infected. That's the signs and symptoms of infection, redness, drainage. The types of peritoneal dialysis Continuous, there's three, a couple, two types actually. Continuous ambulatory, C-A-P-D, they call it. Everything I use, when I use the word P-D, I mean peritoneal dialysis. And there's a type that's done manually without machines. Continuous ambulatory peritoneal dialysis, C-A-P-D, is done without a machine. And usually people schedule it, and it's done with gravity, and usually people schedule that through their in throughout their day's activities. Automated peritoneal dialysis or cycler peritoneal dialysis is called APD or CC, continuous cycler peritoneal dialysis, CCPD. Or they also use a machine for that. And continuous ambulatory, CAPD, you use gravity for the exchanges. I have an example of the bags right here. You have a bag that connect, and the tubing connects up to your transfer set. A bag will hang on an IV pole. Fluid drains out of you. Then you're filled with fresh fluid, and most of, then you cap off, and you can go do your activities. There's little sterile caps that are full of betadine that cover the different various transfer sets. Solutions drain in and out, and that, that process talks, takes about 30 minutes. The process of draining the fluid out, process of putting fresh fluid in, and then you can cap off and go about your daily activity. It's often done that people do it first thing in the morning, lunchtime, dinner time, and evening. And while the fluid dwells, you can exercise, go to the store, work, do your daily activities, watch TV, the dwell times, they call it, that's when the dialysis is taking place in your body, range on the CAPD between four to six hours. And sometimes you dwell longer if you're sleeping with the fluid in. When you use an automated machine, CCPD or APD, automated or cycler type, there's a machine that rests on your bedside table or a cart and it puts the fluid in you, drains it out, and counts down the dwell time for you. And each exchange, that time that the, you drain out, fill up, and dwell, that's, that's the, in an essence, is the exchange time, is done, and the machine keeps track of how much drains out, how much has gone in, how long it's dwelled and it does it while you sleep at night in bed. And for the most part, that's the predominant choice of people, but many people prefer, there are people who prefer not to be hooked to a machine at night. There are 20 feet often of tubing that can go from you to the cycler, that's what they call the machine that does the dialysis, and that allows, you, and extensions can be reused, and that allows you mobility. You're not stuck right next to the cycler. You have a good movement area to be able to get up and walk to the restroom or get in a, set in a chair or move about the room. The drain is also, the drain that when the fluid goes out also has extensions and lines that help go to get further away from the machine. There's no special wiring that's needed for your house. The cycler runs on your regular current. You need a three-prong plug in your house. Uh, some older homes might have to have an electrician help with that, but there is a, the drain can go right to a tub or sink or stool or shower. What different types of cyclers are there? And there are pictures of three different types, some, some major manufacturers that make. They may look different, but, and the, but they do basically the same. 
job of keeping track of those exchanges, and I'll run over that again, is draining you, filling you, and dwelling, and counting down the dwell time, and managing that for you while you sleep. And why would you learn to do either one or the other? Some people prefer just to do the manual exchange with the IV pole and the bags. And, but even the people who do the machine, the cycler, they need to learn both. Because there's times when the electricity goes out, and be it a ice storm or a spring, summer rainstorm that knocks your power out. Or sometimes this, as if the cycler wasn't working, you need to know how to do that manual exchange. Some people prefer to travel doing manual exchanges and not have to take their cycler with, her, with him or her. So to know how to do both types is, is a good lesson and your nurse usually will insist that you if at least know how to do a manual exchange in an emergency or a, a power outage. And sometimes people have to be able to do an extra manual exchange if the cycler that, that runs at night is they need a little bit more dialysis. And you may want to switch in the future, so it's also good to be familiar with both. What does the peritoneal dialysis do? It removes your wastes. Periodically, your nurse and doctor want to have check how well this is removing the waste from your body. And w monthly, you'll have lab work done with, at your clinic, but often they'll have you collect a 24-hour urine sample or, and, and your complete a nightly drain or your complete drains that you have that comes out of you. And that by testing the drains, your urine, and your blood, there's, they can put that into a formula and they get an adequacy or they call the, the words they use for that as KT slash V, KT over V. That helps them to tell whether what we need to do to make you adequately dialyzed. Your prescription depends a lot up on your transport. What is your membrane's personality? Does it have a lot of blood vessels? Does it move waste products fast or slow? So that will be tested to also in the process of you being on peritoneal dialysis. You'll keep some records. You'll weigh yourself daily and you'll get your blood pressure because they want to determine what is a good dry weight. They use that word pretty liberally. And dry weight is some, it's not imaginary, but I like to say it's an it's a imaginary weight where everything is ideal. You don't have fluid on your body. You don't have swelling in your legs. You're at a good blood pressure and you feel your best. You have energy. So a dry weight is when you're at your best energy level, your blood pressure is at optimum, and you don't have swelling and excess fluid in your body. So the only tr that can be determined, and that's kind of our goal. So we daily taking your weight and your blood pressure and checking yourself for extra fluid, such as in your rings being tight, your clothes being tight, or your ankles being swollen, is one of the self-care things that you will do. It depends on your prescription how many times and how many exchanges you do in your doctor's preference, his prescription and what he orders, he or she, your doctor will order. But you need to get enough to be adequate because that's the whole idea behind this is to feel well and to have clean blood that your kidneys performed for you. Starting on PD, peritoneal dialysis, helps maintain your natural urine output longer. You can kind of imagine, um, because this works by the putting fluid in your body, the waste products move into that fluid and the extra fluid is attracted into that fluid by the dextrose, con the, by the dextrose concentration of this fluid that your urine, that your kidneys would not be stressed. So this type of modality or option for dialysis is a lot gentler on your kidney function and helps you maintain urine output, which is very precious to a person with kidney failure. And so a lot of times people choose peritoneal dialysis because they have heart, sometimes for heart issues or diabetic issues where they're they're not wanting to have a, a vigorous dialysis because peritoneal dialysis being gentle 
helps preserve your kidney output. And anyone of any age or education can learn how to do this. It's very simple. And if you're ready and willing to learn and ready and willing to help to be a participant in your own daily care, there are assistance devices for blind and vibrations for hearing and for machines done by the cyclers that are used by people with hearing loss or with vision deficits. Usually it takes one to three weeks to learn how to do your peritoneal dialysis and a nurse can help train you and you don't have to have a helper. You can do this on your own at home. You, the main thing we're going to teach you, I'm the nurse, one of the nurses who teach this, is we're going to teach you sterile technique. And I just wanted to touch on that sterile technique. What does that mean? That when you get ready to do an exchange or hook yourself to a cycler, you're going to get your dog or cat outside that room. This doesn't mean you have to get rid of your pets and not have pets. That's another one of the myths. Because pets are the only unconditional love you'll ever get. You don't want to get rid of them. But they have to be on the other side of the door when you're getting ready to open up your, ex your catheter and hook yourself up. When you're getting ready to take off that special betadine cap, you have to do some things to that room. You need to stop your fan. You need to shut the window. Anything fan that's blowing air, the door needs to be shut. You'll need to put on a mask. You'll have to have your hands washed the way your nurse or the educator will teach you. And right before you're ready to take, these, to take this off and hook up to the bag, or the cycler, you'll sanitize your hands good, even though you washed and you have that mask on because there's a lot of germs in our nose and mouth. Anyone in the room that's in there to help you needs to have a mask on. And that, in essence, is sterile technique. So for the three seconds, you're taking this mat, this off and hooking up to this bag, dog cat out, you've got a mask on, your hands are extra super clean, you've washed and you've sanitized and you hook yourself together. Then turn your fan back on. Relax, do your treatment. That's sterile technique. Checking your vital signs, keeping your records, and handling your fluids properly, storing them where they won't get too cold or too hot. Those are, and ordering your monthly supplies. Those are just some of the things of self-care. And like I, like I have stressed, it's very easy and can be taught in a week, two weeks, three weeks, with no rush. Some of the medications that you may learn to use to help, to help you through this is some people need a little heparin added to this, this fluid. In your body, since fluid's going in, sometimes fibrin forms. It's a, it's a um, protective mechanism of your body to make fibrin. There's like a tiny clotting uh, that's and people, certain people are more producers of this than others. So they have to add a little bit of heparin to their end of their bag. But not everyone does. And that's one of the medications that might be taught to you to use. And sometimes, and we hope you never, and it's not, it's not a given that someone will get infection. There may be antibiotics to add to the bag. Should there ever develop an infection in your peritoneal membrane that can be added to the fluid that you need, that you give yourself for your exchanges. Some, peop, some doctors order insulin to be put in there for diabetics, so to help counteract the dextrose that's in that solution used for dialysis. That's fallen out of favor for some doctors, but I have even lately as this year, as early as this year, still heard of that being prescribed to help your blood build red blood cells because dialysis patients often tend to be anemic. They have to use epigen, that's brand name of a stimulating a hormone, a stimulating agent that's given subcutaneously so that your blood, body will give build red blood cells. Sometimes that's given by yourself at home and sometimes that's given by your nurse. There may be other medications that may come up as also to be ordered by your doctor. What are some of the possible problems that can develop with peritoneal dialysis? Well, sometimes your membrane may not be the best filter. Like I said, it's kind of like a colander that lets some things in and some things not pass through it while the fluid's in there. 
So you may, you're, you may find, well, that maybe my membrane isn't the best filter and the doctor might have to alter your prescription. There can be some catheter issues. Because this is in your body, it can, if you get constipated, it can get caught up in a, in a swollen bowel and get out of place so that you'll have to get a, some other uh, surgeon will have to go back and put it back down where it belongs. There may be some clogging process. Like I was saying, heparin sometimes has to be added to your fluid to keep from these tiny the holes. This isn't just a one-ended hose, it's like a soaker hose with several holes. So the heparin would help keep that from getting clotted up with the fibrin that your, that your body might make. Sometimes hernias develop, and a hernia is anywhere in the uh, abdominal wall where the muscle and the intestine kind of try to poke through. That can cause some pro problems and people be at more at risk, and the surgeon can determine how to fix that. And it doesn't mean you have to be off peritoneal dialysis permanently, but sometimes people get that repaired and have to take a little break from their peritoneal dialysis. That can be one of the complications. Infection. You can get an infection where the catheter goes in. You can get an infection along the line of where it runs through your body. They call that a tunnel infection where it runs through. And you can get, actually get an infection in your peritoneal membrane. They call that peritonitis. Don't let that word scare you. you itis is just the word that means inflammation. You can have a appendicitis. Any organ that, that gets inflamed is itis. So peritonitis is something we totally want to prevent. And using sterile technique with every exchange, always shutting the door, always turning off the fan, always washing your hands, always wearing a mask, and certain other things, like when you go to the dentist, let your doctor know so that there, if there's any germs kicked up from the cleaning of your teeth, there may be some antibiotics that you could take before. If you're having a procedure done to your abdomen, such as a colonoscopy or surgery, there be, can be some a antibiotics that, we, that the doctor or surgeon will give before those such procedures are done to prevent you from getting a peritonitis that might keep you from being able to do this treatment. What are some of the signs of infection? If you have a peritonitis, the first sign that people see is a cloudiness in their drain. And you may not even have any other symptoms. There's just, you will notice that instead of being clear and see-through, what drains out looks cloudy. And that needs to be reported immediately to your nurse. Or the exit site where it comes out of your body may get red or look like any other infection, redness, tenderness, swelling. That needs to be reported because there's antibiotics that can be used for that. If you have a stomach ache or nausea or diarrhea, that can be neat. If that goes on for very many days, I'd say two days. I tell my patients, you have that going on two days, you let me know. And fever, vomiting, things like these are you learn during your training time need to be reported to your nurse so that you can maybe pre preempt any infection from keeping you from having to, use, having to be on antibiotics and not being able to do peritoneal dialysis. If you see signs of infection, call your nurse. Let's see, what follow-up care will I get? In peritoneal dialysis, you, uh, usually you come to the clinic twice a month. The first clinic, is, the visit is to see the nurse for her to get your lab work, look you, look you over and assess you that your exit site looks good, and talk to you about your treatments and look at your flow sheets. We call that where you write your blood pressure and your temperature and, and what you're doing for a treatment daily. And sometimes it's not all paper. There are actually it's devices that go into the cycler that record it, and you would bring that device back. And even some of my patients are on um, a modem that shoots the information to the computer that I can look at as well and see their treatments daily. So sometimes recording is not all paper, but the nurse wants to talk to you once a month and get the lab works. And then the second visit usually is when you see the doctor and the doctor is prescribing the, your peritoneal dialysis. They want to see you every month to make sure you're doing well, and keep you out of trouble and keep you from getting infections. There's a plan of care meeting. 
there's a team that watches over you and helps you as well, not just the nurse and doctor. There's a dietitian and a social worker. And those people oftentimes get together once a month and talk about the patients. And every it's generally once a year that you are in the care plan meeting or offered an, an attendance to attend that meeting. And you have a 24 hour, seven day a week, contact person. There's always a nurse on call to answer your questions and help you with any concerns. And there's this, the cycler, if you're on a peritoneal dialysis cycler, right on the front of those cyclers is a 24 hour, seven day a week technician that's on call for any alarms or concerns. Not just the nurse, but if you're setting up your cycler and you get an alarm you've not seen or know how to handle, there's a technician for that machine that's available. And what are your responsibilities as a patient on peritoneal dialysis? You need to provide access to your home for the peritoneal dialysis nurse. Generally, they come out initially to see that your home is, you have water that runs and you have hot and cold running water and that your home is yeah, well, well lit and plumbing is available. Um, then, and a place to have the storage of the, the boxes. You need to um, be helping the nurse, the social worker with providing her the, your information about your insurance so that the clinic can help Medicare know, or Medicare or whatever insurance you have to know how, how to get your supplies and your labs tested, paid for. Your responsibility are to, to care for your cycler. I always tell people this isn't really, this is used, this is issued to you by the unit that is, is provided for by your insurance, but we don't own it and you don't own it. And if anything happens to it, we have to know that if there's some kind of damage comes to it. Every month you will look through your supplies and you will give a call or email some supply companies with what you have on hand. And that's how they, they know what to send you each month. So that you can, it's delivered to your house and they're supposed to help you put it where it belongs in, your, in the room or the storage area you're using and help you stack it according to your usage. And also help you rotate so the older, the older boxes get used up for the outdate. If you need to travel or desire to travel, your company will send fluid to your destination. They'd like at least a two week most of the time, sometimes even if you know earlier, but at least a two week notice. Even sometimes if you have to travel in an emergency, I have heard and had my patients say they had to make a quick trip someplace and that can also be delivered. For example, you're traveling to Las Vegas your supplies, you can bring your cycler with you and your supplies of fluid can be shipped to your motel. How much space do you need for storage? That's often a question people do ask. You need about, if you're doing CAPD, the ambulatory type and the manual type, you need a, generally an area about four foot by six foot with the automated same, about the same amount, about the length of the table and the height of waist high. The two liter bags, they weigh about four pounds and the bags that go on the machine weigh about 10. So lifting a little bit of weight, if, you, is not, if that isn't prohibitive for you, there is a little, you can use the smaller bags because they only weigh about four pounds and your nurse can help you with those concerns about the lifting of the bags. And maybe even some family members can get in to helping you move those about. Your responsibilities on dialysis, on peritoneal dialysis, is to do your, your exchanges and your treatment daily or how it's, or, how it's ordered by your doctor. And not everyone is doing a daily therapy with peritoneal dialysis. Sometimes there's intermittent where they're not doing it, but four or five times a week. But the doctor will determine that. To do your exchanges as prescribed and not skip. Because skipping shortens your life. Keep enough supplies on hand. 
have at least a five day to six day supply so you don't run short. Keep your records, even be it electronic or written as the clinic dem demands or orders and come to the, your clinic visits. Keep the staff informed about problems or concerns with insurance and contact info. Make, if you move to another address, be sure and let them know. If your insurance changes, if you have health changes, if you're hospitalized, your nurse needs to know. Try to eat right and take your prescribed medications and stay as fit as you can. Take some walks and do some exercise and you'll feel better and have more enjoyment of your life. Anything else you need to know about PD is showers, not bad, tub, bathing in a tub. To get submerged in warm water is not a good plan to have that exit site below an, uh, a, any water that's superheated like a bathtub or hot tub, not allowed. Swimming, there's a myth that you can't swim with a peritoneal dialysis catheter. Most programs now allow swimming in the ocean because that salt water is very clean and private pools that are well maintained. The minute you get out of the pool or the ocean, you need to do your, your exit site care. You, know, you need to clean that up and change that dressing. And there's even some occlusive dressings that are plastic or to help keep the fluid out of it to start with so that it doesn't get as wet. Um, if you're having a hernia repair, you need to, you have to follow your di doctor's advice on lifting. Definitely want to avoid constipation and ask your doctor if you wanted to start a an, an very rigorous inner exercise program that you've not been exercising before. The disadvantages of peritoneal dialysis. There's, there's usually, for the most part, this is a daily dialysis so it, but that in that way it is more like your kidney instead of just trying to do that a few days a week it's done every day just like your kidney worked every day and you it may not work as well as your as your well as your kidney as your kidney function your urine output declines you may need to do more exchanges there can be a pro, uh, there are uh, sometimes not every time person has catheter issues so that may be one of the risks. Every treatment, every modality has a risk of infection. And there is some risk of hernia. Um, people sometimes get, have weight gain because of the dextrose in the solution. And you do have storage in your home. If you have live in a very small hot house or apartment or even a motor home, oftentimes your nurse can get your monthly instead of having once a month once a month delivery it's scheduled it to every two weeks and that's very doable for most people not, to only get their supplies every other week the advantages are you keeps your kidney working longer your urine output functioning longer than say hemodialysis and it's closer to your normal kidney function where you did it daily as i mentioned and instead of three times, like for in center, three times a week for in center dialysis. A more lenient diet since you're getting, oftentimes, than since you're getting it more often. And you don't have a dialysis drag of going to the dialysis unit the third, for those thri thrice weekly treatments where you walk in and have a lot of fluid and waste and get that pulled off and feel tired afterwards. You're getting your dialysis every day and most generally people say they feel better and have more energy and it's done at home so that's more freedom it's flexible and you can do it in different locations say you're going to go stay with a friend or relative it's definitely something you can take with you and you don't have to schedule to to dialyze at a unit at that town or home the short training period and there's no dialysis, there's no needle placement in an access. That's one of the things that a lot of people appreciate about peritoneal dialysis is there is nothing to cannulate. This is the word we use for placing needles. 
and no partner or special is needed. You don't have to have somebody train with you. you you're, well, you're able to do this yourself. And no special wiring or plumbing is required to your home. And if you do nightly dialysis, peritoneal, your days are all free. And you can have a good life with peritoneal dialysis. It's very doable. 